These are your solutions to your Unit 1 review sheet. Please make sure that you are using a grading pen. Anything that you got correct, you're going to put a star by it. Anything that you missed, you need to go through and fix it. Fixing it means that you're going to include all the correct steps with the answer, not just put the correct answer. All right, starting with number one, a diver dove off a cliff to a depth of 18 feet underwater, and then he went up nine feet. So if I have my cliff over here, and the water is right here, the water is going to represent zero feet. And so when the cliff diver jumped off, he went 18 feet under the water. So if he went down this far, that's going to represent negative 18. And then he went up 9 feet to right here. Hopefully he ended up all the way back up. But for the problem, he went up 9 feet. Um, we need to come up with two different expressions that represent what happened. So the first number we had was negative 18. And then we added nine positives. So that's one representation. For the second representation, we need to be a little bit creative and use what we know about the relationship between addition and subtraction. A second possible expression is still going to start with negative 18, but since we know that adding a positive is the same as subtracting a negative, this expression, 18 minus negative 9, means the same thing as negative 18 plus 9. So there's two expressions that represent that. And when I work that out, he's still going to be 9 feet below the surface. So that's going to represent negative 9 feet. And then anytime you've got words in the problem, you're going to make sure you include some sort of units. And in this case, that would be feet. Okay, next, number two, um, we're going to solve all of these problems involving rational numbers, so our fractions, decimals, integers, and we're going to be sure that we always use order of operations if there's a choice between what to use. All right, um, for part A, we're going to take both of these mixed numbers and change them into improper fractions. So to do that, I'm going to multiply 7 times 8, which is 56, plus 3, which is 59. So negative 7 and 3 eighths is the same as negative 59 eighths. Then we're going to change 6 and 1 fourth. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 1 is 25. And that's still going to be out of 4. Now I need to get common denominators, so I'm looking for a number that 8 and 4 can both be multiplied into. And I can use 8 for that. So I'm going to rewrite both fractions out of 8. The first one is still negative. And since the first fraction is already out of 8, I'm just going to copy it exactly like it is. So nothing changes. That's identical. For the second fraction, I'm going to look at what I need to multiply 4 by, which is 2. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing to the numerator to get 50. And now I can add my fractions. So the denominator is going to still be 8. And then I'm going to add negative 59 plus 50. Um, I have different signs. One's positive and one's negative. So I'm going to subtract the absolute values, which is 9. And since I have 59 negatives, there's more negative. And so I'm going to end up with negative 9 eighths as my answer. My final step is to change that back into a mixed number. And I can do that by dividing. 9 divided by 8, 8 goes into 9 one time with 1 left over. And you can even show it 9 divided by 8, 1 times 8, and subtract and get 1 out of 8 left over. And since it was negative, I'm going to keep my answer negative. All right, part B, I'm going to need to use order of operations for this one. And the first thing I'm going to do is look at the parentheses. I need to add negative 5 plus 1 and 25 hundredths. 
those have different signs, so I'm going to subtract the absolute values. So I'm going to put 5 on top because that has a larger absolute value. And then we can borrow. And that comes out to 3 and 75 hundredths. But I had more negative than positive, so that's going to be negative 3 and 75 hundredths. And then I'm going to bring everything else down. We can see that there was a 3 outside the parentheses. So that means I'm going to multiply and then bring down negative 2 and 5 tenths with the plus sign. All right, still following order of operations, I'm deciding between addition and multiplication. So I need to multiply as my next step right there. We can do a quick estimate. 3 times negative 3 is about negative 9, so we should be somewhere in that ballpark. I'm going to put 3 and 75 hundredths on top. I'll worry about the positive or negative once I multiply, and multiply by 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 7 times 3 is 21. Plus 1 is 22. 3 times 3 is 9. Plus 2 is 11. Um, and now I'm going to count how many places to move it over. So it's moved over two places there, zero places there, because it's really after the three. So I'm going to move this over a total of two places from the right. So one, two, and that's going to come out to 11 and 25 hundredths. Our estimate was somewhere around nine, and so that's reasonable when we compare it to either 1.125 or 112.5, 11 and 25 hundredths is going to be the most reasonable. And then the final piece of that, a positive multiplied by a negative is negative. And now we're going to bring down the rest, negative 2 and 5 tenths with the plus sign. All right, we're going to move our work out of the way so we've got more space. And our final step, we need to add two negative numbers together. These have the same sign, so I'm going to add the absolute values by lining up my decimal points. And then the decimal is going to stay lined up with where it is. And if I add a negative plus a negative, I'm going to get an even larger negative number. So technically it's a smaller number overall, but it's further away from zero. So I'm going to get negative 13 and 75 hundredths as my final answer. Once again, if you are fixing these problems, please include every single step that you see in the video. Okay, on to part C. This time we are subtracting, and we always want to change subtraction problems into addition problems by using keep that opposite. So write the problem just a little bit bigger so you can see my steps. Um, we're going to draw a column around the subtraction symbol and rewrite as addition. So I'm going to have negative 5 and 2 tenths plus positive 1 and 6 tenths. These have different signs. I'm adding a positive and a negative, so I'm going to set it up as a subtraction problem with the number with the greater absolute value on top. And now I can borrow. That comes out to 3 and 6 tenths, but I had more negative than positive, and so my final answer needs to stay negative. So this is going to be negative 3 and 6 tenths. Okay, on to part D. Um, this means multiplication. Um, a negative multiplied by a negative is a positive. So I can do the same math problem as just 4 and 3 tenths multiplied by 5 and 2 tenths, and my answer is just going to be positive. Okay, I'm going to start by multiplying 2 times 3, which is 6, 2 times 4 is 8. Then when I move over to the next digit, I need to put a 0 as a placeholder, and then multiply 5 times 3, which is 15, 
5 times 4 is 20, plus 1 is 21. And now I'll add the digits. And then I need to figure out where my decimal point goes. Um, up here, it's moved over a total of two times. So one there, one there, which means I'm going to move my decimal point two places from the right. And when I estimate, 4 times 5 is 20. So 22 and 36 hundredths seems very reasonable with what I would expect it to be. And once again, this is positive because a negative multiplied by a negative is a positive number. Okay, on to part E. Um, this time we have some fractions and decimals combined together. We're going to start by simplifying the numerator. And so to do that, I want to change both of those into the same format. I'm going to change both of them into decimals because I feel like that'll be a little bit easier to work with. So first, we're going to change 2 and 1 fourth into a decimal. If you remember that just by memorizing it, great. If not, we're going to quickly review how to change 1 fourth into a decimal. So the numerator goes inside the box. The denominator goes outside. 4 is larger than 1, so 4 goes into 1 0 times, and now I need to change this from 1 to 1 and 0 tenths. Um, if I add a decimal point here, I'm going to move it directly above, and 4 goes into 10 twice. Now we can multiply. 2 times 4 is 8. Subtract to get 2, and then we're going to add another digit to bring down and 4 goes into 20 exactly 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20, and when we subtract, we're left with no remainder. So if I wanted to change 2 and 1 fourth, that's going to be 2 and 25 hundredths. So now we can use that in place of 2 and 1 fourth up in our problem. So this is going to become 2 and 25 hundredths minus 8 and 5 tenths, all divided by 3. And again, we're going to simplify the numerator first. I am subtracting, so it'll help if I change it to 2 and 25 hundredths plus negative 8 and 5 tenths. Again, let's just keep that opposite. Still divided by 3. And now I'm adding two rational numbers with different signs, so I'm going to subtract them. I'll put 8 and 5 tenths on top, line up my decimal point, can fill in a zero so everything lines up nice and neat, and now we can borrow. So that comes out to 6 and 25 hundredths. And since I had more negative, that's going to be a negative 6 and 25 hundredths. Okay, we have one piece of this left. I'm going to clear just a little bit of space so we've got some room to work. All right, and now our final step is division. We are going to divide negative 6 and 25 hundredths by 3. And again, um, a negative divided by a positive is negative, so my final answer will be negative. All right, 3 goes into 6 twice. 2 times 3 is 6. We'll subtract. Then we're going to bring down the next digit. Um, 3 goes into 2 0 times. We're going to line up these decimal points with each other. So we're going to put a 0 as a placeholder. And then 3 goes in to 25 8 times. 8 times 3 is 24. Subtract and get a 1. And now we're going to need to add another 0 to bring down. So we already brought the 5 down. Now we're going to bring the 0 down. 3 goes into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract, 
putting down another zero, and now we're going to see that this starts to repeat because three into 10, it's going to go into three times again. So this last three, or rather both of them, or even just the one, those are going to repeat. So for our final answer right here, we're going to get negative 2.0. 8, 3, and we're going to put the repeating bar just above the 3 because that's the only piece that continues to repeat. All right, move that work around just to give us a little bit more room for part F. So on part F, we're dividing two mixed numbers. We're going to begin by rewriting both of them as improper fractions. So I'm going to multiply 3 times 5, which is 15 plus 2 is 17. So 3 and 2 fifths equals 17 fifths divided by, and then same thing on the second one, 2 times 10 is 20, plus 9 is 29, so we get 29 tenths, and that one is still negative. When you divide two fractions, you're going to keep your first number the same, so that stays 17 fifths. Division, we can change to multiplication, and then we're going to multiply by a reciprocal. So reciprocal means I'm going to flip the numerator and denominator, so this is going to become negative 10 29th. Okay, so that problem is the same as 17 fifths times negative 10 29th. From here, um, I can either multiply straight across and just do 17 times negative 10, get an answer, 5 times negative 29, get an answer. But I can actually simplify the negative 10 fifths first. So negative 10 fifths, when I simplify, I can divide both numerator and denominator by 5 to get negative 2 over 1. And I'm going to replace that. Negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. 5 divided by 5 is 1. And now this is going to make the computations just a little bit easier because I'm going to have some smaller numbers. So now 17 multiplied by negative 2 is negative 34. And 1 multiplied by 29 is 29, so I get negative 34 29th. My final step is to change this into a mixed number. So we can do 34 divided by 29. 29 goes into 34 once with 5 left over, so that's going to be 1 and 5 29th. Also, it was negative, so my final answer will also be negative. So I get negative 1 and 5 29ths for my answer. Okay, next I have a number line with 0 and 1. Also, I've got two variables, a and b. We need to decide whether the different operations are going to be positive or negative. So for part a, if I add a plus b. This distance right here represents a. If I slide it over here, I can see that the absolute value of b is greater than the absolute value of a. Um, there's more negative than positive, and so when I add these two together, I'm going to get this much more negative, so my final answer will be negative. And then for my reason why, the expression a plus b is negative because the absolute value of b is larger than the absolute value of a. And we can use the picture to show that. Okay, next, a minus b. Um, for this one, it might help to approximate some numbers. This isn't going to be exact, but we can get some estimates to help us. Um, this distance is 1, and so right here, this would be where the number 2 is. So A is somewhere around 1.75, um, 1 and 
two-thirds, somewhere in that ballpark. Just for simplicity, I'm going to pretend that it's equal to two. I'm just picking a number that's bigger than one that's still easy to work with. Okay, B is the opposite direction, and if I had to guess, it's roughly negative three. Again, that's not entirely precise, but it's close enough, and it's close enough for us to get whether it's positive or negative. So when I write this, I'm going to change it from a minus b to 2 minus negative 3. So I'm just substituting in 2 in place of a and negative 3 in place of b. Otherwise, the negative or the subtraction sign stays there. So when I do that, I have 2 minus negative 3. Let me give myself a little bit of space. And we're going to change it using keep, add, opposite. And that's going to become 2 plus 3. Again, even if you wanted to use more precise numbers, it would still work with that if you changed it. Um, either way, you're going to get a positive plus a positive. And a positive number plus a positive number is always going to be positive. And then we can write in a reason why. The expression a minus b is negative because subtracting a negative is equivalent or the same as adding a positive, and a positive added to a positive will always be positive no matter what. All right, moving on to part c. Um, this one is asking about a multiplied by b. Again, we can use these estimates of 2 and negative 3, um, or we can just look at it, A is positive and B is negative. And any time you multiply a positive by a negative, you are going to get a negative for your product. So we can write in negative and then write in a reason why. The expression AB or A times B is negative because a positive multiplied by a negative is always negative. And then for part D, that says A divided by B. Um, so we're doing a positive divided by a negative, and that will also be negative for pretty much the same reason as part C. And that reason would be the expression A divided by b is negative because a positive divided by a negative is always negative. All right, part four, use a number line to demonstrate or show how to find the difference negative three minus seven. We're going to take a moment and we're going to fill in the part of the number line we will need. Okay, so now I have my number line filled in, and I'm always going to start at whatever the first number is. So I'm starting at negative 3. From there, you can either think of it as taking away a positive, or we can rewrite it as negative 3 plus negative 7. Either way we write that or think about it, we need to move to the left. So negative 3 minus 7. We're going to start at negative 3 and take away 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we're going to end up at negative 10. Okay, next, number 5. Use long division to determine if 1 ninth is repeating or terminating. So as we saw before, 1 ninth can be changed into a decimal by dividing. We're going to put 1 inside the division box and 9 outside the division box. From here, 9 does not go into 1, so we're going to put a 0 as a placeholder. And we're going to change this into 1 and 0 tenths. We'll go ahead and add a couple extra zeros in case we need them. Okay, now we're going to look at these two digits and treat it as 10 divided by 9. And 9 goes into 10 one time. And then we can subtract, get 1, bring down another 0. 9 goes into 10 one time. And we start to see the same thing happen over and over. 
I can continue on, it's always going to be 10, 9, 10, 9 with all of these ones. Um, we had a decimal point right here, so we're going to move that directly above, and that's where our decimal point will go in our answer. And this is going to continue on and on and on forever. So that shows us that the decimal representation is repeating, and I could write my final answer as 0 0.1 with the repeating bar over the top, and then I'm going to fill in a reason why. And a sample of what you could write, it's repeating because it would continue on forever when you divide 1 by 9. All right, next, Amanda's checking account balance was negative $245, so she owed money. Then she deposited $60 three times. What is her current balance? We can represent this a few different ways. We can write down what she started with, and then we can either add in three sets of 60, or if we want to condense that a little bit, um, we can change this to just be 60 times 3. So three sets of 60. Either way, whether you do 60 plus 60 plus 60 or 60 times 3, you're going to get a total of $180 that she deposited into her account. And then we'll bring down the first piece we started with. These have different signs. So I need to subtract the absolute values, larger absolute value on top, and that comes out to 65. However, we had more negative than positive, so that's going to be negative $65. So even though she deposited $180, she's still in the whole $65 total. Okay, next part eight. Which of the following are true about eight plus negative eight? Um, if we think about this on a number line, so I'm going to count by two, zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. Um, we're going to start at positive eight, and then to add negative eight, we're going to move left until we get to zero. So that's one of our answers, the expression equals zero, and then we need to figure out the second one. This one says the expression describes the number that is 8 to the left of negative 8, and 8 to the left of negative 8 would mean that we're starting over here and moving left, or it says 8 to the right of negative 8, which means we're moving this direction. Um, that's the one we want because that's the one that also is going to equal 0. So both of those equal 0, so they're both going to be true. And number 9, which of the following is a correct interpretation of the expression negative 3 minus 5? Um, again, we can rewrite it negative 3 plus negative 5, if we're thinking about integer chips, we have 3 negatives plus 5 negatives. All together, our sum is going to be 8 negatives. So let's label our number lines so we can show that. Okay, we're going to start at negative 3, which is right here. And from there, we're going to take away 5 or add 5 negative, which means we have to move to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we get the same thing we did as when we showed it with the integer chips. Um, so first thing, we started at negative 3. So A and B both say start at 5, so those cannot work. And the other piece, we move to the left, which corresponds to part C. Start at negative 3 and move 5 to the left. So C would be the correct answer to number 9. All right, that concludes the video for all of your solutions. Just to see if you're paying attention and made it all the way to the end, I want you to put a nice little happy face next to number nine, and then I'll be able to see that you actually listen all the way through. Um, be sure to use your study guide to help you practice. You have now fixed everything, so you should have correct work on everything with your grading pen. 
Um, if there's any problems that you missed, you might want to rework through them without looking at the answer and see if you can get the same thing now that you know what the answers will be. If you do that and you're able to do every problem on your review, you should be just fine for your test. So good luck studying and I hope you do well.